Okay, uh, what's happened since the last video I did? Well, Trump got elected for a second time, and there's a new documentary just in the last couple weeks or so on Netflix called Join or Die. And um, don't worry, it's not as ominous as it sounds, um, but both of those are sort of linked into um, chapter 5 in this book, um, what I'm going to be going over. <coughs> I've already done <coughs> chapters 1 to 4 in, in previous videos, so I'll put the links down below. And uh, this is all tied in together. If, if this book didn't exist, if I didn't find this 29 years ago, um, there's a likelihood that this thing wouldn't have existed. So anyways, uh, what have I done to the Velo since the last one? I've put on some stickers here. Um, Deliberative Democracy, Citizens Assemblies. i got one down here, you can't see Civic Journalism and then the same sort of stuff on the side. Why? Because uh, when people come up to ask me about this, usually the first question is, <coughs> you know, is there a motor in there or something like that? And so I want to try and change that to more of, you know, what is deliberative democracy and stuff? Because that's why I bought this thing, right? Um, but anyways, if if you are interested in uh, where is the motor in this, it, it's um, entirely powered by my legs and um, so I'll show a photo of the trans uh, the transmission of the power of my legs up here back to the rear uh, wheel here you know, just one big long chain then it goes to uh, into a, a roll off hub which is this thing here and uh, some of us might remember those uh, you know when when we were younger we were riding around on banana seat bikes with a three speed hub well this is uh, a 14 speed hub so, but same same deal um, and then it just goes to the wheel yeah okay so Trump yeah so why did Trump get in well uh, the the James Carville quote comes up quite a bit. It, it's the economy, stupid. So um, that's um, makes sense. Um, a couple, of, some other pundits have compared uh, Trump to Bernie Sanders, even though they're on the the opposite ends of the spectrum. Um, they are both ostensibly concerned with the working class. Um, Bernie Sanders certainly is, um, and if you don't know who Bernie Sanders is, I'll, I'll, I'll put a, a link to the uh, uh, an SNL skit or two where uh, Larry David plays Bernie Sanders, and um, it's it's good because you'll see he's 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 on the left, but he's not. I've never heard him go on about identity politics and and uh, that sort of stuff. I think it's mainly the economic trying to um, get a better deal for the working class um, whereas Trump um, you know he, he's just riding the wave I, I don't think he cares about the working class I don't think he cares about anybody but himself but um, yeah be that as it may so um, it ties into inequality down in the states and just in the last I don't know, month or two, I, and I think I saw it in Harper's Magazine, uh, a statistic that really made me, uh, like I knew inequality was a, a big problem and just getting worse for years and years and years, decades, like I studied this 30 years ago. Um, but uh, so Amazon employees, the average Amazon employee gets $20 an hour. Jeff Bezos, 
who owns Amazon gets eight million dollars per hour so that's um, that's a really good advertisement for uh, inequality right so and at a certain point like like as Adam Smith um, indicated hundreds of years ago he's like the father of capitalism you need a certain amount of inequality to be to prod people into working for their own self-interest and in in the uh, the result of that is society as a whole um, becomes um, richer I guess but at, at, if that inequality gets to a certain point then uh, there's all sorts of uh, negative unintended consequences and um, crime is certainly one of them um, and then that inequality ties into what I talked about in an earlier video um, about this book The Rise and Fall of American Growth uh, by Robert Gordon and he talks about the four headwinds that work against um, economic growth and, and one of those headwinds was inequality so I'll, I'll put a link to that on there too and okay I guess we're on to changing maps like I'm going to go through the um, chapter 5 in here and uh, it will tell you how this Netflix video um, ties in with the uh, kind of stuff we're we're seeing today so I'm I've just highlighted some of the uh, the better quotes in chapter 5 and I'll just as I've done in previous chapters I'll just read them all as society page 108 in changing maps as society becomes more interconnected, splintered, complex, and turbulent, more traditional ways of organizing and governing are being overwhelmed. So let that sink in. This was written 29 years ago. Splintered, complex, and turbulent. So more traditional ways of organizing and governing are being overwhelmed. So they knew what was coming. Now we are, con this is page 109, now we are confronted by individuals who look at the same data through the lens of their own framework of interpretation, developed in a different, sub a different culture or subculture, and see a different reality. And I'm reminded of um, Kellyanne Conway in the, and her, when she talked about alternate facts, right? So we each live in our own um, little information cocoon and, and uh, sometimes we can't agree on you know whether 2 plus 2 equals 4 or not right page 110 we need to learn how to communicate better with those coming from very different perspectives and cultures bingo page 113 most influential perhaps was the work of Robert Putnam Robert Putnam is featured in the documentary on Netflix called uh, Join or Die. And I talked about Putnam before. I think it was in the, the same video as the Robert Gordon one. Um, he wrote this book, Bowling Alone. And um, essentially that's this kind of stuff. It's what blew my mind 30 years ago and got me into all this stuff. Um, so, uh, Putnam's work, and again I'm quoting here, has been compared favorably for its insight and importance with that of de Tocqueville. And uh, I mentioned de Tocqueville in a, uh, another uh, video uh, way back when. Um, this guy's book, Democracy in America, some people have called it not only the best book ever written on democracy, but the best book ever written on America. So I encourage you to uh, look into it, but you can get an idea of what it's about by going 
checking out the Netflix documentary um, Join or Die. So in that documentary it talks about social capital and in here it says quote a group whose members manifest trustworthiness and place extensive trust in one another will be able to accomplish much more than a comparable group lacking that trustworthiness and trust. And that, that applies to uh, governance, that applies to the economy, um, and uh, Putnam was looking at Italy, you know, the, the north of Italy versus the south of Italy. Page 114, what best predicted good government in the Italian regions was choral societies, soccer clubs, and cooperatives. Um, these are the sorts of organizations that um, tend to help us understand each other and uh, appreciate each other and um, that's where you know trust comes in and as I've said in a previous video trust is a lubricant for um, capitalism for those elements of socialism like healthcare, education, filling potholes in, in, in roads <coughs> that kind of thing and of course governance. Um, page 116, it is on that social process that both economic prosperity and good governance depend. Building social cohesion and a learning society requires that we find ways to provide a reasonable distribution of the proceeds of that society to its members. That's where we're talking about um, inequality again. And, um, you know, $8 million per hour versus $20 per hour. And that, I mean, all the, the billionaires like Trump. Elon Musk, um, it remains to be seen how they're, if they're actually going to attack the problem of gross economic inequality. Um, he says he cares about the working class. But At the same time, we are reaching the limits of the tax transfer system to address issues of redistribution. Different ways to redistribute work, different ways to encourage wider participation in capital ownership. Those what's needed. Examples of proposals for the redistribution of work include a four-day work week um, and providing benefits for part-time workers. As for uh, c capital ownership, employee stock ownership plan, uh, all citizens should be able to earn wages from capital as well as from labor. I'll repeat that. All citizens should be able to earn wages from capital as well as from labor. Back in the summer of 01, I worked for a, a small engineering company here in Red Deer called EXH. <clears throat> Full-time employees there were able to buy into their the own the the company they were working for, and um, that made for employees who were more invested in the success of their own company, right? Page one twenty-two. The major economic and social institutions of society cannot be made to work effectively simply through the laws, regulations, social policies, and monetary incentives that govern them. <coughs> Rather, to work, they require that the citizens of, the, of a society hold and transmit from generation to generation an appropriate set of supportive values and attitudes. And then they look at the different areas of society where um, it's not just laws that's going to save us, it's, it's 
understanding that we're we're all in this together and um, we need to look at quote supportive values and attitudes unquote so the free enterprise system the market capitalism um, talks about the ideas of fairness we have to um, to participate in the market we have to know in our bones that it is fair um, it, it's no use we, when we look at other places in the world where corruption is rife and um, you know it, it just they don't have the prosperity that uh, um, most of the advanced uh, uh, countries do. Tax collection. Income tax system cannot be enforced by audits and penalties alone. We, we have to know again in our bones that um, our government is not ripping us off, right? We have to know <coughs> that, that, that there's not corruption and and of, of course, um, you know, we can go through lots of examples where um, there is waste and corruption, but that's where the citizenry have to get involved um, and force our elected leaders to um, make changes. Income support systems. The desirability of independence and self-support. Most people don't want to be freeloaders, right? Um, the criminal justice system. It cannot work effectively and fairly if the fear of punishment is the only deterrent to illegal acts. Again, we have to know in our bones that we're all in this together and uh, there has to be an element of fairness and um, which will tend to reduce crime that way instead of just fear of punishment. Uh, myth. Okay, it talks about myth in here. It's, it's uh, there's two ways to define myth. So I'll this is just a dictionary here, so um, the way that they're talking about it in this book is a traditional story of ostensibly historical events that serves to unfold part of the world view of a people or explain a practice, belief, or natural phenomenon. <coughs> and then um, like it, they liken it to a parable or an allegory. So it's something we use, um, myths are something we use to try and live by, right? And uh, parables in the Bible, right? So on myth in here, in the absence of believable myths, coherent public action becomes very difficult to improvise and sustain. Next section, infrastructure for public learning. Forums where people can come together to learn about and actively engage real choices and to work through some sort of resolution. There, however, and I've talked about again in the previous video, um, one of the elements that needs to be present in those forums is actual influence on policy. You need to have actual power. The, the politi Some things are just too important for politicians to be handling alone. And that's where we get into citizens' assemblies. Page 126, public policy juries, very similar to citizens' assemblies. The idea would be that citizens would be selected to do a week of public policy jury duty. Parliamentary institutions experimenting with public workshops and other alternatives to the usual hearing format. 
public examination of different budget scenarios prior to the presentation of a budget. Government needs to become much better at sharing knowledge. Okay, and then next section is on information technology. Essentially, what we would call these days the internet. Um, <clears throat> this, this book was, uh, again, uh, published in 1995, so the, that word, the internet, is only mentioned in here once. They mentioned the information superhighway and uh, stuff like that. We are allowing private players to control this game, and there appears to be no sense of public urgency about it. Well, there is now. I mean, you know, um, we see it with uh, kids these days with their nose buried in, in their phones, and uh, it, it's kind of sad. And, you know, you hear statistics about <coughs> teenage suicide and whatnot because they look at all the, the beautiful people on their phones and, and wonder why aren't I like that, or they, they get bullied. Um, on social media or that sort of stuff so um, it, it's, it's just not good and I see it when I'm, when I'm on the pathways with this thing uh, uh, I'm barreling towards some kid with their, with their nose in, the, um, in a phone and um, if I'm coming up behind them I'll, I'll ring my bell but if, if they're coming towards me at the same time I, I won't ring my bell I'll just zoom past them and, and all of a sudden what the hell happened right and it's it's kind of funny but it's kind of sad government ought to be a leader in using the new information infrastructure to encourage dialogue improve decision making provide information and deliver services Use the new information infrastructure as a medium to foster public dialogue. Provide members of the public with access to a shared database and simulation models that could be used to explore the implications of different policy options. Again, the citizenry needs influence on policy, right? Um, it can't, we can't let it all be done behind closed doors with, you know, a single politician and who knows how many lobbyists and, uh, special interest groups. So, again, citizens' assemblies, deliberative democracy, civic journalism. That's my rant for today. Thanks for listening.